I'm Chris Steely, and I appreciate your commitment and your credentials. The fact that you both have advanced degrees says a lot of that. Uh, I'm a businessman in the community. I have an MBA myself, but I also understand the value of being involved in the community and fostering the future of it. Uh, I've actually taken on a couple local high schools and mentored kids. As a matter of fact, a week ago today, I was giving a presentation at Basic High School to 300 kids around crisis. And one of the things I noticed, the energy of the, of the, of the group, is that there's that peer pressure. There's that pressure to conform, and there seems to be an undertow of, well, I can't really excel. You know, I have to stay mediocre because that's where I'll be accepted. And it was really distressing to me to see that. So I know you're committed to changing that. I know I do my best, but as legislators, as political leaders, you know, it, it, I, I don't really know how to fix it, but I'm committed to doing my part to do it. Maybe it's, maybe it's the whole no child left behind thing. I, I really don't know. Matter of fact, what's your perspective on No Child Left Behind? Is it a good or a bad thing? Sorry, what's wrong with you, Jose? Jose Solorio. Um, I think the concept behind No Child Left Behind is a good one, is that uh, no child is left behind, that, that, that we help all children. But I think the implementation has been, has been problematic because uh, if you set a goal and you set laws, but then you don't fund these goals or these laws, then, then you put the burden on the states. And, and then the states have to come up with the money. And so the implementation hasn't been as good as it should be. Now your question as to how to motivate these children, um, different schools have different situations. Uh, when I was on the school board, let me give you a quick example. Uh, there was an issue of, of raising money for a bond, $900 million to build schools. And the administration uh, approached the board and said it should be 90%, 10%. We have such a need for new schools, 90% of the money should go for new schools and 10% for the older schools. And I said, wait a minute. Um, and they showed me brochures of uh, playground equipment. I said, that didn't sound fair to me. Tax everybody, but, but build new schools mostly. So I, I took that issue because uh, I, I thought there was a disparity in, between the learning environment of the older schools and the newer schools. So I took this before my board members and said, listen, visit your schools. And in a process that took about six months, I was able to convince my fellow board members to change the formula to 60-40. So now 40% went to the older schools to bring up the environments closer to the newer schools. That was an extra $270 million that, that went to the older schools. So when you look at situations, you need to come up with solutions. And there were principals coming to me and talking to me about this, and I was listening to them. There were parents, there were students. And this was something I was able to accomplish. So I think when you take a situation and you look for solutions and you can bring players to the table for that solution, you can come up with good solutions. So uh, that's just one example of what I did as a school board trustee. No Child Left Behind is the same way. What can we do to make this work? Okay, so we need to talk to the, the players involved. And when I say players, I mean partners of education and come up with some solutions. I'm all about solutions. I'm not about saying we have problems. I'm saying let's get some solutions to our problems and let's get them implemented. That's what I bring to the table. I'm all in for education. That's my motto, all in for education, and I'm going to be a strong advocate. Jose Solorio. Annie Wilson, No Child Left Behind. It's a very good concept. I agree with Mrs. Lowe's here. It's a very good concept. But the, thing is, the problem is implementing the programs. You have to have the right people, the right leadership in place to implement any program. If you don't have the right leadership in place, no program is going to work. And if you do have the right leadership in place, what you need to think about is changing the mindset of others. If you can't change the mindset of, of others, it's not going to work. Uh, with no child left behind, I've gone to some of the schools and talked to some of the teachers and some of the parents. I feel I was one of those students a long time ago. Uh, uh, going to school here is a native of Nevada. I was one of those schools, and, and I see the gap. Uh, from going from high school to college, big gap there. Things I should have known, I didn't know. So I see the gap there. So it's important to engage the parents, engage the community, engage everyone involved. Bring the key players to the table. Maybe they can come up to come up with some solutions that we never thought about. Think outside the box. And that's why I say bring in, look at be, uh, look at best practice, um, bring in all the different parties. This way so we can make things work. I'm for education. I'm a strong advocate of, of education. Uh, you mentioned mentoring uh, earlier. Mentoring is very important. Mentoring it gives the kids empowerment. Empowerment is important, especially in Las Vegas today. I've seen kids where I've turned their lives around. That's very important to turn lives around. Uh, you can, uh, even as an internship program, 
and work with a student, one, one, one student at a time. Uh, turning things around is important. Empowerment, internship programs, there's a lot of things out there that we haven't thought about. We have to think outside the box to move forward, make things happen, and we can do that. I've, I've been in programs uh, working for the police department. I've made things happen. Take a program from nothing made it something today. Today, some of these programs are best practices that I have done and worked with and implement. It's very important to get everybody engaged, but look at different solutions. I mean, even if you use something for a pilot program for three months, see how it works. If it works, continue to build on it. If it doesn't work, tweak it, you know, you can tweak it and, and rebuild it. Annie Wilson. And District 5 has not shown up yet, the candidate, the one candidate for that. So if the panel members want to continue on with their questions, which uh, the next person to ask a question already said yes, they would like to continue on. If that would be okay with the candidates, we'll continue on. All right, there you go. Um, I'm Bill Lyons. I'm a parent also, and I've been in Vegas since I was 12. I've grown up through the most, to the school district. And I was younger, the electives, were a lot more and they were able to teach you things so if you weren't going to college you had choices to explore and figure out which one to do nowadays it's less and less every year they cut out more and more of the, of the electives and no kind of school activities so the kids had nowhere to go and aren't learning what they want to be when they get older so my question to you is what do you have in mind to bring back the electives so the kids who aren't going to college have an avenue to explore to get a career? Can we switch? Take turns that way. Sure. Annie Wilson, okay, we're talking about programs to help children that was, uh, the children that do not want to go on to college, uh, looking at exploring different alternatives for those children. There are different alternatives for the children. Those that want to go, that don't want to go to college, there are trade programs out there, uh, apprenticeship programs out there. Uh, again, mentorship, mentoring those children to become something, make something of their lives. Uh, studies have shown, I don't have the statistics with me, but studies have shown, kids when they graduate from high school, if they don't do anything, uh, they don't do anything. Most of them end up just laying around the house or end up in, in the criminal justice system. And that's something that we don't want. We don't want to build more jails. We don't want to build more prisons. That's something prisons. That's something that we don't want. We want to help these children. Uh, one thing that I think we need, we need more funding for other programs, for after school programs. I know the girls and boys clubs have different programs because I go there sometimes. I look at the girls and boys clubs and some of their different programs and everything. But some of these programs, you know, they're activities only. What about skill building, team building, teach, teaching them things that they can take to the outside to use? I mean, it's, it's different things out there. I work with Job Connect a lot. That's another thing that I do. I work with Job Connect a lot. There's jobs out there. You may have to start from the bottom, but you can work your way up. And they're willing to work with these children. Uh, they have youth programs. I work with the city of Las Vegas all the time. They have all kinds of youth programs. Uh, some of the programs that may be cutting out, but then there will be other programs. Uh, like, a, again, get the community involved. Get faith-based groups involved. Faith-based groups, they have a lot to offer that we don't even think about. Get them involved and let them maybe, maybe uh, come up with some different activities. Uh, one of the activities that's going to be going on in the next couple of weeks, Cardboard City Program. We get a lot of youth that goes to those programs. The program is about raising money for different activities and different programs. Uh, the city of Las Vegas, what they just did, uh, do something like that. They have a, a program, donation station. This is where they have the meters. Uh, anybody put money in the meters? The meter, meters, the meters that we have outside on the street, they're monitored. The money that comes from the meter, they're recycled back into programs. This is something that we can do for the children. Have meters out there. Let people donate money to meters. The money recycled back into the programs for children, for school activities, uh, something like that. That'd be something new. This is a different funding source that no one ever thought about. Annie Wilson. 